Hi guys, welcome back to Kids for Code Day 3. My name is Zoe and I'm going to be your teacher for today. So today we are going to be learning about how to create lists and links in HTML. Before we get started, we are going to go over the answers to, some, to the summary questions that I left you off with in the previous video. So question number one, what is the tag that you must have at the very top of your code? And that is going to be your document type. So make sure that you have the exclamation part exclamation point right before the word doc type number two what does an empty tag mean an empty tag means that there is no closing tag and that there's only one of that tag this tag does not need to surround any other content so normally tags there's an opening and a closing tag however an empty tag means that there is only one of it and it does not need to surround any sort of content. So in the last video, we saw examples of this through the BR tag, which creates a new line, and the HR tag, which creates a horizontal line. Number three, what is the difference between an H1 and an H6 tag? H1 is the most important and H6 is the least important, which means H1 creates a bigger heading than H6. So the text that you surround with H1 tags makes it bigger than text that you surround with H6 tags. And in the last example, as you saw as we progress from H1 to H2, H3, H4, H5, and H6, the text is, becomes smaller and smaller. And so finally, H6 is the smallest. So if you ever want to create a big announcement, then use an H1 tag. Number four, what is the tag that you would use to create a line break? And that would be the BR tag. Now notice with empty tags like this, you put a forward slash right here before the closing bracket. Okay, now we are going to learn how to create a skeleton. Now, what is a skeleton? A skeleton is all the code that you need whenever you create any sort of new HTML project. So this is all the code that you need when you create any sort of HTML project. Now, it's kind of annoying how you have to type all of this in every single time you have to start a new project. So creating a skeleton is something that will make your lives a lot easier. Creating a skeleton just means you copy and paste all of this code, or you type all of this code into a new file, and then you save that. So that way, whenever you start a new project, then you can copy and paste this code into your new project so that you don't have to manually type all of this code into your new project every single time. So I'm going to demonstrate how you save that. So in my brackets file right now, I have my skeleton open. Now, I'm not going to type any content into here. This is just the code that I want to save for future projects. So what I'm going to do is file, save as, I'm calling it skeleton.html. Make sure you always put .html at the end of your doc files, and I'm saving it in my Kids for Code website. Now, it's called skeleton because this code is the bare bones of every HTML project that you will create. So it's important that you keep it someplace safe and you save it. OK, now we are going to learn how to create lists. So first, we have an ordered list. An ordered list means that there are numbers. And by default, it starts at number one and ascends in increasing order. So these OL tags surround the entire list. And inside the OL tags, you have list items. So these are the things that are on your list. Each list item has to be surrounded with this tag. So here we have an example, items to buy for college. And notice that the title of this was created with an H1 tag. Next, we have our opening OL tag and our closing OL tag. And now inside, we have each of our list items, laptop, mini fridge, laundry basket. And notice how each item has its own set of LI tags. Next, we have an unordered list. An unordered list means that there are no numbers, the order of the list items do doesn't matter, and you use bullet points. So here we have an example of ice cream flavors. The title has been created with an H1 tag. Now we have our opening UL tag and our closing UL tag. And now inside we have each of our list items, chocolate, vanilla, and strawberry. And the tags that you use for list items doesn't change, regardless of whether you're using an unordered list or an, or an ordered list. So 
each of our list items is surrounded with an opening and closing li tag and the order that you type in type it in in the code is the same order that it will appear in your browser and by default the bullet points are going to be small, small black circles called disks so the cool thing you can do with ordered lists with all types of lists actually is nesting and nesting is when you put one list inside of another list so here we're back with our ice cream flavors we have our unordered list chocolate vanilla strawberry however inside our chocolate list item we created a new list and in our new list we have dark milk dark milk so with nesting, you can get a lot more specific with each of your list items. We, we have more specific chocolate flavors right here. So we have an unordered list right here nested inside this list item of chocolate. Now notice how the opening tag of chocolate is right here, right before they type the word chocolate. And the closing tag is right here after the closing tag of the unordered list that is nested inside. Now we have another example, this time with an ordered list. So here we have a to-do list. We have our opening, closing tags, and we have two items, do laundry and walk the dog. However, inside do laundry, we have a listed, a nested list, and we have more specific instructions on how to do the laundry. So first, carry the basket's basement, two, sort dark and light colors, and three, check settings on machine. So we have this ordered list that gives more specific instructions on how to do the laundry. Now we are going to learn how to create links. So first, we are going to learn how to create links to other websites. So this is the full tag on how you do it. So this is how you do it. First, you create an opening bracket, lowercase a space href equals open quote, and this is where you paste the full URL of the website you would like to link. Close quote, close this bracket, and then here, this word, or you can have more than one word, is where this link is going to be stored in. So on the website, the word Google is going to show up. And if you click on the word Google, it'll take you to this website, google.com. So in this way, you can see that this link is stored inside whatever word is in here. So I'm going to demonstrate by giving you another example. So what I'm going to do is I'm starting a new HTML project, right? And as we said before, I'm going to copy and paste all of the skeleton code. Copy new project and paste and always remember to save save as and I'm going to title this link example and don't forget dot html and we're going to save it in my documents kids for code folder save okay now I have the basic bare bones of what my project is going to look like. Now I want a website that I want to link. So I'm going to go to the Kids for Code website and I'm going to copy their link. Now I'm going back to my code and notice that I'm going to be typing in between the two body tags. That's where all of your content goes. All right, now let's type in the tag a space href equals now a nice thing that brackets does is that when you type in a quotation mark it automatically gives you a closing one so that you won't forget it all right now here is where i will paste my link all right that's the kids for code website link and make sure you close that and now here is where i need to give a few words or one word on that I want to store this link in. So since this is the Kids for Code website, I think I'm going to put Kids for Code. All right, now always remember to save, or you can do Control S. Okay, now let's live preview and see what this looks like. 
All right, here we have Kids for Code. I click on it and it takes me to the Kids for Code website. Now, let's say I just delete this text and don't forget to save. Let's go back. See, now there's nothing here on my web page. So even though that the link appears here in your code, if there's no word right here to store the link in, then the link is not going to appear anywhere on your web page. So although you can literally type any word, let's say I type in the word unicorn, save that. See, we have the word unicorn and I click on it and it takes me to the same website. However, Unicorn doesn't really have anything to do with Kids for Code. If you want to put any word here, you want to make it a word that is relevant to the website that you're linking. So I think Kids for Code is the best few words to describe what this link is. So let's save that. And let's go back, click on it, and it takes us to Kids for Code. So that is how you create a link to another website. Now let's go to let's learn about how to create links to pages that you have already created. So here we have three different files, index, about, and dogs. And this is the code for each of them. And this is what index will look like in the web browser. Now, something important about this is that if you want to create links like this, all of these files have to be saved in the same folder. So in this case, about dogs index are saved in the same folder called dogs. So I'm going to demonstrate. Let's go to my folder. And here's my dogs folder. And here are my three files. So let's open them in brackets. Click on it, right click, open with brackets. Click on the file, right click, open with brackets. Okay, so I'm going to live preview what each of these websites look like. So this is the about me page. Let's see what that looks like. All right, so about me is right here. And these are the two links to the other two pages. This is just some filler text. It doesn't really mean anything. Okay, now let's live preview what dogs look like, looks like. Dogs, same thing. Only difference is that dogs is here and we have about an index. Whenever you're creating a website with multiple pages, index just means the home page. Okay, finally, let's go to our index home page. It's the same thing, except it says welcome. So the syntax is pretty much the same thing as linking another website. However, inside the two quotation marks, you don't put a website URL. You put the name of the file. So here we are in the about page, right? Yeah. Okay. So we have two links here, the first link and the second link. And notice how they're also inside a list, an unordered list. So we have a first link and our second link. And in the two, in the quotation marks, we have the file name. So this is the file name for index. This is the file name for dogs. So if we go to the website and we click on it, index, we're on the index page. And if we click on my dogs, we're on the dogs page. So let's go to the dogs page. We have our two links here. This will take us this should take us to the about page and this link should take us to the index page. Let's see if it works. About page, yes. Index page, yes. So as you can see, the syntax is pretty much the same except instead of a website URL here, you put the exact file name. Make sure you spell it correctly because syntax is very important. All right, 
Now we, are, we have some summary questions. So the answers to these summary questions can all be found throughout the video. So if you rewind and watch carefully and listen carefully, then you'll be able to answer all of these questions. So number one, what is the difference between OL and UL tags? Number two, what is the tag used for a list item? Number three, write the code for a link to your school's website. And number four, what is something you should keep in mind when creating links to other web pages you created? That is going to be the end of this video. Thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye.